The Weeping Cove is rumored to be a resting place of Two-Toed Tobias, an ancient three-barrel legend. You are not the first to visit since the days of Two-Toed Tobias. The magic runes indicate that a powerful spell was cast here recently, creating a vast air bubble inside the underwater cave. Okay, all buffed up now. Small fetid creatures shuffle about in the gloom. I don't know if these are undead or the plague reaper. Probably because these are all undead, I'm not going to be using this spell. Swap it out with that one. A hole in the ground leads to another part of the cave. In a hole in the ground, there lived a hobbit. As the valve turns, I like the epic the strike. I'm just upset that it's single target. Otherwise, it's good. Through the cave. Oh, we were able to color spray him. That's good. Um, okay, so there goes that. Okay, this is trapped. But we have evasion, so we should be okay. The wind from the east dwindles yeah. and dies. We're fine. Just run them all through that whirling force blade. It's a good spell. The cooldown on it's slow though, but. Got yeah, good damage though. Um, which way? Okay, this way. Just 
gonna throw one right here. Just run everything through it. And there they go. Nice and easy. Oh, remnant. Give me that. Oh no, I've got filth fever. All right, so let's cure ourselves of filth fever. There we go. probably turn the vampire into a frog. I wonder if I have enough to find this. Yes, that's great. All right, we'll try to frog the next That was my meteoric star ruby proking. All right, mass frog on the, I mean, regular, let's see. Uh, he did not turn into a frog. We did turn him into an icicle. He had, like, death block on or something. He would not turn into a frog. Oh, can I get up there? Yes. Where's my jump? It's right here, right? Yes. There we go. Two Reapers. Okay. Invisible. There's my epic strike. Here's that. Epic strike on the Carney. Gonna color spray him again. Now that strike does a dot, so he's got a, a dot. He'll be dead. Ground, down on the floor of this vast pit. All right. 
I'll use the shrine on the way back. Don't see any reapers. Just gonna drop down invisible and throw down a like a big there. All right, so it's everybody except for the boss. And we were able to turn him into an ice cube. Visible. I don't see any reapers. He con drained me. And then I got hit with the dance. All right, let's fix our con. There we go. Gouts of flame stream from the nearby pipes. We have improved evasion, so we don't need to worry about traps or anything like that. Uh, we'll try to melt the lock on this since we have it. We rolled already a 16, so See if I can roll a 20. I This should scale and allow me to pick it. It's super lame that it's so difficult. This is just junk. Did I really roll three eights in a row? And two threes? And a one? I don't understand. How am I rolling so crappy? I kind of feel like I should do it like Baldur's Gate does it and have it like right there. Eighteen. I rolled a 20 and it didn't work, so. It only took me... How many rolls was that? 80? Pipes groan as the second valve triggers another door deeper inside the cave. Gonna use that shrine.
Nice. Okay, I'll take the lost soul. On opposite sides of the room are levers adorned with bullseyes. The floor slides open, revealing dark waters beneath. The door before. Okay, I need Death open, Ward. As if you were expected. And we should be okay. Jack has beaten you to the cash. Me damn the blood tide. The undead pirate hisses. It is said that they hide a priceless treasure here. Be it there's not in this hole, but common bobble. Not that you'll get your hands on those, young lover. Jack Jibbers leaves none behind to tell the tale. This fight used to be so hard. They made it a lot, a lot more doable alone. He used to be impossible to kill. You've defeated the legendary Jack Jibbers. Yet the pirate's legend claims the inside the chest you find I a did not get one treasure map along with some other items sad We're getting close to 27 though that's cool The Weeping Cove is rumored to be a resting place of Two-Toed Tobias, an ancient three-barrel legend. Usually no mobs out in this map, so it's unusual to see all these. There's a red named. Nothing. Okay, I'm really close to 100, so I'm going to get it. Maybe that'll pop me off to 27. Uh, 
Ah, uh, really close. Really pretty close. Maybe the zombie train? Possible. So if more of them start spawning, we got it. No, we did not get it. We tried. They have such great sound effects. Alright, maybe a zombie train right here. Uh, doesn't look like it. Might be one right over here. Yes, it is. Okay, great. Pretty good, it got us pretty close. I'm not sure if I have this, so I'll pick it up. 
Last night I dreamed of the light again. This time a man stood in the sun by the pond. A man I had never seen before. He held up his hand. And in it was a sword that blazed with light. He told me that night was ending, and help would come with the dawn. When I woke up, it was still dark, and I could hear the wind howling outside. But this time, I could feel a warmth within me. A light that refused to go out. The entire land is cursed by a vampire. So, it's not just you having bad dreams. It's everyone who lives here. There we go. Okay, let's go. Oh, I went to the wrong... Okay, we want Epic Transmute. Ruin also probably would work. Actually gonna take Ruin. That was quite some lag. Okay, so now I've got shared mantle. Okay, there's Ruin. See how much it costs. Hmm. 113 spell points. That's quite a bit. Orchard Slayers. Yes, let's go. Well, I sent to join, but I'm not sure if they are. Oh, it's full. Two, four, six, yeah. It's really lame. Go see how many Orchard Slayers I have already. So it may be that I already did a bunch.
Uh, no, I still have a lot to do. would be better to get in a group though just because the, the numbers would go a lot faster but it's good to know that i can mentow's apprentices use this overlook to guard fresh shipments to the laboratory interesting i have been investigating how to tap the power of the darker planes to power my ascension to godhood in all the ancient texts, the same name comes up time and time again. I shall have to rediscover the long-lost secret of House Vol. Oh, right. Lightning, like, gives golems a boost. Well, those type of golems, anyway. Flesh golems. Right? They're like Frankenstein monsters, and if you ele electrocute them, they come alive more. Is it Frankenstein or Frankenstein? Roderick? A, hmm, let me see. I tried to pronounce your name before, but I'm not sure. I'll probably butcher it. A with storm. Pretty good. Two massive piles of bones have been heaped here in the orchard. Oh, if these are real bones, that is a lot of bones. Like a lot of bones. Oh, we got them all. Wow. I mean, this epic strike goes so far, I literally can hit that Doom Sphere. As long as I can target it. And they have no idea that I'm even attacking them. Yeah, Alchemist is, you could make the argument that it's like the strongest class in the entire game. It's so good, but interesting thing is not a lot of people play it, but super, super strong. Oh, they're immune to lightning and cold. So I'm going to have to throw a fireball at it. There, I threw one at it. Things got a lot of hit points. I'll throw another. Interesting. So it's undead, right? I believe. It's an undead beholder. Okay, so... What about this? Oh, no. That doesn't target, correct? Uh, just gonna run up and hit it with my sword. Did I get this? 
She's not as trustworthy as I believed. I've learned that her Emerald Claw lackeys helped disrupt my ascension. She swears that she knew nothing about it, and that her underlings have been properly chastised. But I'll keep a closer eye on her in the future. High school undead drama. That's what I think about when I hear that. I was a teenage lich. The Western Crypts hold the bodies of many of the Black Abbot's earliest followers. You probably look and see if somebody's doing something that I can join. I think I picked all these up. How is this possible? Yeah. She not only thwarted my attempt on her existence, but she took control of my followers. Outbreak. My magics. Yeah. I think I did that. Craft a spell that allows her to control another lich, and had the audacity to use it on me. Me. I'm the one worthy of godhood, and now I must become her lapdog. Oh, I forgot I could have turned that beholder into a frog. Hey, there's a name tier. zombies okay we're just gonna ocean bomb them from here there we go lady Arandis is impressive she's so I did I got all these already sorcery and an accomplished wizard in her own right so trust her the poor fool. I'll soon know all I need from her. In case you're curious about what build I'm doing, we have because we're running around in Verand or Veridite, whatever they call it, the green one. So we have the capstone, but I did not go top tier. Just because a lot of this stuff is sort of useless for me. I mean, it's okay. This is... I, I never really have good luck with that. That's okay. This obviously is great and I would want it, but I find that having Displacement and this Ring of Shadow Blades is more powerful, at least for leveling up. I might switch this back to normal once I get to Legendary content. And then this here, I don't really need the UMD. Uh, the spell power would be nice, and so would the 15%. But it's not like, in the short term, this displacement is way stronger. So it's a lot to buy just to get, like, two things. But it's a lot stronger. And then this is just another admixture cast of uh, cause or cure critical wounds. Which, you know, I mean... Nice to have, but the displacement is better. So, right now we're 10 50 10. I need to get my dodge up. I can get that up a little bit. But we're going to try once I get to cap to see what, like, the best destiny is. I'm thinking with Ruin, probably Draconic will be the best. But for now...
For now, I'm using Primal. Look and see. Nobody? Over the centuries, the Black Abbot's enemies have been brought to this place to be slaughtered and sacrificed. A bunch of them behind me. This small tomb is the burial site of an ancient. A lot of werewolves. Like. They have a big werewolf problem. Okay, so the Lich is immune to lightning. I'm gonna have to run up and just hit it, basically. I don't think it's gonna take damage from my potion. I'll try. Here's a fire potion. Yeah, and then here's an ice potion. Yeah, it took no damage at all. And it's immune to the lightning. So I have to actually just hit it. We were immune to knockdown though, so. They really are the scariest things out here. Like, if you come out here with no knockdown immunity, the Lich Lords can knock you down. So, like, on Hardcore League... I've seen people die on Hardcore League to the Liches. Mangy Werewolf. That Lich has fed me nothing but lies from the start. I never should have trusted her after the Emerald Claw lackeys helped thwart my ascension the first time. Now her minions infest the entire orchard. This cave looks like it might cross minions. To the other side. Really? Did they need to voice record that? This cave looks like it goes through to the other side. That's it, bro. We couldn't say something about the interior. Okay, we'll pick up the scroll. My brilliant plan lies in ruins. Not only has she used her foul magics to compel me, but she's taken control of my most powerful lieutenants, the Doomsphere, the Cinder Spawn. She even had the audacity to kill Mentau. And I had such plans for an army of flesh golems. This small isle stands firm against the dark, murky waters of the sky. Uh, 8,000 on an epic strike. That's really good. There had always been war between the elves and the dragons. The conflict between Aranol and Arganesson dragged on. Unending, unendable. Minara, the leader of House Vol, sought a solution to the eternal war. She thought, what if there was a child, an extraordinary child, uniting the blood of both the elves and the dragons? 
I am Aranda's foal, and I was that child. I was to bring peace to the elves and the dragons. And I did. At a terrible cost. Okay, people are doing the druids. I've already done those. Uh, yeah, gonna move. We're waiting to see something that we might want to jump into. Just leveling up. I would jump into something harder if there were groups, but it doesn't look like there are any. Oh, Orchard Slayer is just open, so I'm going to see if I can jump in that. Oh, got in. It's too bad there isn't like a go back to where you were button, because I was literally just there. Thank you. Just gonna teleport to the salt marsh. And then take my ship. I think that's the fastest way. There we go. So we're getting an update tomorrow. We're getting Slice of Life, which is update 67, which gives out the second of the dragon themed rewards, which is basically a quest pack that contains three quests that we get to. It looks like Morgrave University Court, the Nymph's Court, will have the three quests. Fred's first date, too many cooks, and this old haunt. I don't know anything about these, although I think Fred's first date is sort of themed like Baldur's Gate, right? Um, this pack is free for the month of April, but then will become uh, like you can purchase it. And then VIPs will get it for free. They're also turning on gold rolls tomorrow. So you'll get a free gold roll every day if you're a VIP until uh, the next, whatever it is, the end of April. And it looks like they're making it so that dodge, not dodge, pardon me, tumble. You get one tumble for taking it at level one. You get another tumble for taking it at getting 10 points and you get another tumble for 20 points my understanding I might be wrong but right now I think like right now you just get the one point for taking point and tumble so they're just gonna make if you actually invest points in that tree it's gonna be worth more which is cool that makes sense I kind of wish it was a little bit more though right like it seems like a expensive just to get one charge for 10 points but on a character like this where i have a lot of skill points anyway i, I could probably i probably don't need spot so i could probably get tumble
Hey, I can loot this. Yeah, it looks like the patch notes have a bunch of other, like, little fixes and stuff. I didn't see anything major. Looks like they just fixed a bunch of things that were not functioning correctly. I've said it before, like, if you played Baldur's Gate 3, um, you could narratively, like, make an argument that Fred is the Emperor. It took some doing, but Lady Arandus and I have come to an agreement. I am to teach her about planar magics, and she will teach me about her dragon mark. My plan it couldn't be going any better. If you do the heroic ending of Baldur's Gate 3, where you, um, you know, defeat the Elder Brain, and you side with the Emperor, at the end, he leaves. Like, he basically is one of the last Mind Flayers, and so he leaves. The gist is that he goes to the Underdark, but he doesn't really say. <clears throat> so it's not, like, out of the realm of possibility that he came to Eberron via some means, right, to hide out. Um, it's completely fabricated, though. Like, it's just a basic, basically a hypothetical narrative. But <clears throat> you easily could do it. You know, if you're a writer, like, it's there. So they certainly could write that in. Um, you know, if DDO wanted to include more content that aligned with Baldur's Gate 3, which in my opinion is not a bad idea considering how popular Baldur's Gate 3 was and how they've, how Larian Studios has actually said they're not doing any more um, Dungeons & Dragons content, at least for the near future. Like, we thought that maybe they were going to release um, like a DLC for Baldur's Gate 3, but they've recently said that they're not that they're working on something completely different uh so but baldur's gate is just on the map of the forgotten realms so ddo ssg could go there if they wanted to it, you know it's not like larian studios owns the city of baldur's gate like anybody can use it as part of dungeon and dragons and then like I said, there's a lot of open story elements from the end of Baldur's Gate 3 that they could certainly incorporate, so. What I would like to see them do, really, is get some of the actors, some of the voice actors, to come over here and voice quests for us. Like, it would be really cool if the woman who is the Dungeon Master of Baldur's Gate 3 could become the dungeon master for like a pack a quest pack over here and then it would also be really cool to get like the actors who played the various people like astarion and lazio and uh shadow heart to come you know and voice specific kind of like what they've done with the um with sharn they had a few people from whatever that group is called arcana and then uh I've also, like, obviously I'm probably not the only person making these suggestions, but I think Matthew Mercer should also come over here and uh, DM a quest for us. You know, I mean, like, he's he's largely responsible for a lot of the popularity that Dungeons & Dragons has right now. So, considering what he did with Critical Role, so I think it would be really good if he came over here. I think that would attract more new players but i'm not involved with ssg in any way or you know wizards of the coast so i mean i make suggestions on the forum like everybody else and they ignore me like everybody else so i don't know
But I, I, if I were in a position where I could make a call like that, that's what I would do. I would reach out to those actors individually and try to hire them to come over here and read for us. And then, um, you know, if I were hired to write for them quests, it, it'd be really easy. You could, you wouldn't even have to, you know, like retcon anything because the end of Baldur's Gate 3 is so open-ended. So that's what I was saying. Like, it's very easy to assume that Fred was the emperor, you know, even though he wasn't like, because Baldur's Gate 3 came out a long time after Fred's been around forever, but um, we certainly could, you know, that's a possibility. As long as you did the heroic ending. And I think the heroic ending is the canon. I think it's the canon ending of this, the game anyway. I might be wrong, though. You know, it's possible that the canon ending involves the... Um, the, uh, the, the Dark Urge. Because the Dark Urge was like the canon story for Baldur's Gate 2. So... Not really sure. I don't know if Larian has actually said what their canon story is. But the heroic ending, the Emperor lives and is a hero. So, And since Fred is, like, friendly to humans, you know. Of course the Black Abbot was planning to betray me all along. But I am the greater wizard. It was easy to compel the Abbot with my magic. Very soon now, I will drain his power and channel it to my reawakened dragon mark. The abbot will be destroyed. But I will at last be able to reach through the plains to Dolor, the realm of the dead. And she'll be able to graduate high school and then go to college. Still a teenage lich. I do miss being able to tumble like 80 million times in a row. Now we're getting close to 3,000. Wow, I see dead people. Heat rises uh, there's a tome, the right? To the inferno of the damned. Where is it? Right there. I swore on my slaughtered mother that I'd fulfill my destiny. For centuries, I've worked in the shadows, plotting and scheming. I was born with the greater dragon mark of death, and I knew oh, that I could do it. Oh, there's people up there. The blood of Vol would be vindicated, and my enemies overthrown. Yet <laughs> fate laughed at me once again. You see, to control a dragon mark. You must be alive. Oop. Well. It's okay, we'll go check these crypts. Oh, somebody just is exiting the crypt. Maybe there's something in here. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, it looks like they're fixing a bunch of stuff with the epic strikes. Tumble's no longer going to break stealth. Shield Mastery is going to work right. Pistani, Fan of Knives is working correctly. Then they fixed a bunch of the curses that you put on with those cards. Bear traps are always going to be visible now. Unless there's like some special circumstance why it was hidden. That's cool. The bear traps are super annoying. Uh, specifically because unless you are, like, in a very specific stance to avoid them, uh, they can pin you, even if you have freedom of movement, so it's, it's super annoying. But if you go into the Shadow Dancer Mantle, then you no longer trigger them, and I think that certain 
um, assassin. I think it might be the assassin tree. I, although I might be wrong, but I think. Okay, somebody just joined. We should reset this because I'm not seeing anything. going to ask them to reset it. See what they say. Okay, he said yes. All right, so if we're resetting, I'm going to shrine. Oh, is everybody just leaving? Magnificent temple of yeah, yeah, okay. So I can just shrine when I re rezone. There is a shrine, like, right there, but it would take me too long to get to it. But I get to spend some points. Um, guess I could take that. I said I'm probably gonna redo this all later, but for now. I'm going to go head to the shrine. I know there's a shrine the other way, but I'm going to head to this shrine over here. A lot of water, Ellie's. Oh, I got some filth fever. Sounds gross. Filth fever. See if the I want to see if the lich takes the um the damage. Nope. So we actually physically have to just beat the liches up.
Can I line these up like in pool? Kinda, yeah. So this epic strike goes like unlimited distance, right? So if I can target it, I can hit it. See, that's right at the edge, probably, of where I can see it. And I can attack and kill it, which I just did. But does the other attack, this one, go as far? Thunder Snow? Let's see. So I'm going to try to hit that dude. Oh, I can target him, but it doesn't hit him. Not like the Epic Strike. The Epic Strike will still hit him. So if you want unlimited range, grabbing that storm catcher from Primal is the way to go. Damage on that one isn't that good. Oh, the party leader just left. Let's see how much damage I can do. I don't know. Compared to this is like the equivalent, Thunder Snow is the equivalent of Shard Storm. Shard Storm like really does a lot of damage, so. Not sure that that's worth it. Yeah, everybody's leaving, so. I'll shrine up and likely have to go unless they put up an LFM. I don't know. Rampager. Let's see. He did not put up an LFM. But they're doing Salt Marsh Slayers. Oh, Rampager. He just did put up an LFM. All right. I'll hang out here till 5K and then I'll see if I can jump in that. So I've ha I have Epic Mage Armor. Right now, it doesn't really do anything. But if I decide to use a Rune Arm once I hit Legendaries, uh, then I could get the Tier 5 ability in Macro Tech and then turn it into an Untyped bonus. And then it will buff my armor class by like 40 or 50 or something, whatever the ex exact number is. It's quite a bit, actually. I'm not sure if it will work really well on this particular character, but I just wanted to experiment with it. Um, likely something else would work better on this alchemist since I'm doing DPS and I don't really care about my armor class anyway, but it was new and I wanted to try it out. I can always like lesser TR or something. This character came from hardcore anyway. And so I was just basically testing. Okay, he said he asked me to recall. So I'm gonna recall. Oh, 
Hopefully I don't get attacked. Am I going to get attacked? No, I get up. Okay, everything's reset. So my main is a warlock right now, but this is the build that I played for a long time. I was an alchemist for a long time. It's very strong. Alchemist is really, really good. And just because I see some new viewers. So the build that I do is my capstone is Genius Never Dies, which is like one of the best capstones, I think, in the game. And I skip this top tier. Like, yes, I do want that. However, leveling up in epics, like once I get to legendary, I may redo this. I'm not sure yet, but for leveling up, because this capstone is not as strong as this one. So I went tier five here for these two because this permanent displacement and this ring of shadows is really strong. So it like greatly increases my survivability. And the only thing I really miss out on is like two tran uh, this here, this whatever this DC is transmute so like in legendary if i wanted to like really blast up my frog dc so i could transmute anything i'd probably redo it and like drop displacement but if i'm just soloing and i don't really care about losing the two points uh then you know i'd keep displacement because displacement is really strong Obviously, what we've seen with all the dragon lords using it, right? All right, so I just got level. Hey, good to see you, Kevin. Thank you, you too. We just got level 28. On our alchemist that we played on hardcore league this alchemist died on hardcore league in a quest that absolutely sucks that should be skipped and it's around a level 14 quest i think if anybody can guess what really shitty 14 level 14 quests there are Oh, actually, I did the wrong stat. It's intelligence. No, don't make me the party leader. All right, so... I... Probably going to take Crush Weakness. So I don't want to take this. These are great, but my spells are all over the place. I'm doing Fire, Ice, Lightning, Negative, Positive. This is Untyped, so this is Force. This is Force. Like, I, I need all of them. So until I really know where the build's going to land, it's no use for me to take this back when I used to use carrion swarm it was a no-brainer I would just take acid right because carrion swarm was so strong but now I don't really know so I'm thinking that it's going to just be basically I get to cap and then likely I'll have to like lesser TR or something like that but in the meantime 
because I'm locking things in ice and I'm also color spraying them, uh, the crush weakness will help me just burn them down a little faster. I mean, obviously, there's different ways to approach, like, building alchemists, but this is just, like, very general. And this character really has no, like, set role. It's not like I'm healing for a raid or something like that, so... Or DPSing for a group. If I were, I would come up with something that were specific for that role, but... <clears throat> just tooling around by myself, 